Boy poured a whole bag of chestnuts into a basin of water. The bad ones float up and the good ones sink. He threw out the bad chestnuts one by one. Then he learned from a woman selling chestnuts to fry chestnuts well. The stones must be small and smooth. So the boy bought 20 pounds of small round pebbles and when he saw the woman spraying the chestnuts with sauce so he took a taste when the woman wasn't looking afterwards he went home and made his own concoction with syrup and water everything was ready the boy spent a lot of money on a fully automatic chestnut frying machine he thought it would produce the best chestnuts in thailand but it's hard to control the temperature of the chestnuts the chestnuts exploded one after another like popcorn however after several failures the boy finally made chestnuts that wowed his family then he rented a two square meter stall in the snack street he officially started his own chestnut frying business but three days passed. Only five boxes of chestnuts were sold. The other stalls were packed with customers every day. The boy wondered what was wrong. Is there something wrong with the way I sell? So he took advantage of his girlfriend's shopping time, watching the other vendors carefully. But as he walked, he discovered another key factor. The donation box in front of the toilet was not shouting, but the box was quickly filled with his brow furrowed in thought. Eventually he realized every person who came out of the toilet basically had coins in his hand that the toilet attendant gave him. And there was no place to spend the coins in their hands and it was too much trouble to put them in their pockets. So most people just threw them into the donation box. With this conclusion, the boy rushed to the property manager to move the stall to the entrance of the supermarket at a high price. Because he knew the customers coming out of the supermarket also had change in their hands. And so it was. After the change of location, turnover that is rapidly rising up. At this rate, a million baht a month. That is still very easy. The boy could not help but smile broadly. However, just when the boy was immersed in counting money until his hands cramped, he suddenly received a notice from the shopping center to move out. It turned out that the white smoke from his chestnut frying machine had yellowed the ceiling of the shopping center. Before the boy could think of a solution to the smoke, a bigger blow came. His father had gone bankrupt and was in debt. He was going to take the whole family abroad to escape the storm. But how could the boy give up his chestnut business so easily? He refused to leave the country on the grounds that he hadn't finished his studies. Looking at his father, who used to be a great man, he had lost all his vigor. The boy made up his mind. He must pay his father's debt. When his girlfriend learned about the boy's family, she took out a tin of seaweed to comfort him. The boy took a piece and stuffed it into his mouth. Oh, my god, it's really good. So crispy and crunchy. So a new business idea instantly emerged. Boy lit the gas stove, picks up a piece of seaweed and puts it in, into a 150 degree frying pan, and then quickly pulls it out, and shakes off the grease. But as the boy chewed the seaweed in his mouth, his face became distorted. What the hell is this? It tastes worse than a plastic bag. But this is the hundredth box of seaweed the boy has fried. But no matter what he did, the seaweed was always bitter and greasy, until all the seaweed was used up. It still didn't have the flavor he wanted. The boy turned around in frustration. Suddenly he found a packet of seaweed scattered on the floor. So he put the seaweed into the frying pan with elastic hope, only to find that the seaweed was not only dry and taut, there wasn't even any grease on it. The boy couldn't wait and popped the seaweed into his mouth. It's delicious. That's what it tastes like. Then the boy looked puzzled. He picked up the packet of seaweed and found that the outer plastic bag was very wet. It must have been drenched by rain and that made the boy realize that seaweed should be soaked in water and then deep fry it to make it tasty. With this secret, the boy's seaweed was sold out as soon as it was sold. In just one month, he earned 100,000 baht. The boy thought that at this rate, he would soon be able to pay off all his father's debts from bankruptcy. But when the boy learned that his father's total debt was 40 million, he was confused because according to the current turnover, he would need to make seaweed for 40 years in order to pay off all the debts. At that moment, the boy suddenly looked at the convenience stores behind him. He realized that there were three convenience stores owned by the same company at a small intersection. If my seaweed, I can sell it in a chain of convenience stores. I'll be able to expand my sales. So the boy combed his hair into a grown-up look the next morning. He put on a handsome suit and went to the chain's headquarters. But before he could introduce his seaweed, product. The manager turned him away on the grounds that the seaweed was poorly packed. In order to seize this opportunity to pay off his father's debt as soon as possible, the boy sells his favorite computer, find a designer to design a more eye-catching packaging, and gave it a beautiful name. But just when the boy was full of confidence, he went to the headquarters of the convenience store again. The product manager ignored him. He didn't like him very much. After six hours in a row, the boy's inner defense was completely shattered. He threw the seaweed in the lift and gave up his dream of starting his own business. But little did he realize, this box of seaweed became an important opportunity to turn the boy's life around. It turns out, a convenience store chain worker saw the unplanned seaweed in the lift. He opened two packets of seaweed and tasted them, but after one bite, he couldn't stop eating. That's how the boy was called to the company by the product manager. Hello, we're going to put your seaweed on the shelves in 70,000 shops nationwide. But before that, the food quality inspection department will visit your factory. If it passes the inspection, the cooperation will be effective immediately. But the boy is now broke. Where could he get a factory? 
Just when he was at a loss, the boy suddenly thought of his father's pure gold Buddha medals. So he used the 100,000 baht he got from selling the medals. He rented an abandoned warehouse and renovated it. Soon after, the quality inspector came to this simple factory. But as soon as they entered the door, the workers here, why aren't they wearing masks? There are no lampshades on the electric rods. The sink was full of dirt. Even the old paint on the door. It's not even dry. When the boy saw that, he promised to fix it right away. And sure enough, by the time the quality inspector came back for a second inspection, the whole factory had a new look. And with the boy's products, and the factory all met the standards. The boy's seaweed was sent to 200,000 convenience stores around the world. In just two years, the boy paid off his father's debt of $40 million. He became Thailand's youngest billionaire.